Hello, my name is Beth Goldie, and one of my pieces was an, an encaustic piece, which is molten wax and rosin. And I thought I'd show you my home studio, which is a very recent addition to our home. Um, we finished out an unfinished section of our basement, and uh, I've been working at the Cultural Arts Center where I, I also teach encaustics, um, but now I can actually create things in our home. But I don't do a lot of the large things here. I have another studio where I do my larger work. It's in a converted barn, and I'm gonna show that to you afterwards too. Right now, um, I'm gonna show you some of the pieces and what encaustics actually are and what they look like. Um, behind me, you're going to see uh, some, uh, it's a new wall that we got from Closets by Design. And in our my other section, there's also more gallery space. And uh, I have a butcher block countertop with cabinets, so it's wonderful. And I can't wait to really get started. I've only just had this about a month and I haven't created um, anything down here yet, so I'm very excited. Um, and I hope you enjoy my little tour. But behind me, I have just a few pieces that I kind of put together. Um, I'm also, I, I do decorating for people, and so I like to put like things together. I help the art leagues out sometimes with hanging shows, um, just to make sure that things look coordinated and colors go nicely together. But um, these kind of show a little bit of the variety and colors that uh, can be possible with encaustics. So I'm gonna continue this and show you around a little bit. I'm gonna give you an overview first. First of all, you can see this is our laundry room as well as um, an unfinished section of our basement. That's what it looked like before. And now the walls have this wonderful gallery system that I've got some work on already and I hope to, to keep uh, adding more and more pieces to it. But over here, just to start out with, um, it's just a variety of, I've got encaustic photographs as well as some shellac burn pieces and um, I'll show you up close a little bit more. Um, but when you do an, a photograph on matte paper, and then put it in clear wax, you can just get, it looks like it's behind glass without it having glass. So it doesn't have that same glare and you can get some really nice effects, but also on the outside and the areas that you would normally put a mat with a photograph, you can get very textured and add maybe a, whatever color wax you'd like to have as a mat. So that's why I like this technique so much. And then you can still put it in a floating frame and have them look very nice. Um, one other thing, well, lots of different things I like about encaustics, you can get very textured and um, be very 3D with your work. This one uh, incorporated egg cartons of all things that would have been smooshed down with lots of wax added. And um, so there are a lot of different techniques involved with this but uh, I just love the 3D effect, and I have some rust particles in there too. So it's very tactile, and uh, what's nice about encaustics is that they look like tile. You can buff them, and they're nice and shiny, and they just are wonderful, wonderful medium. That's why I was so attracted to them. You can also get very abstract and um, do some things like with this with a shellac burn where you actually add um, pigments to shellac, add them to your wax and set it on fire and then it's a little out of your control with some of the shapes and things that happen with it but I just love some of the uh, very uh, organic shapes that you can get with it and then you can still add like white around it on top of it if you wanted to um, clean it up a little bit. So I've been having a lot of fun with that technique. And then you can get very soft. Um, this one uh, was a gouache base on, well, you have to use a, a, a wood surface so that things don't crack or warp over time. So I did a gouache background with clear wax on top and then um, some pan pastels on top. 
So there's hardly any colored wax in this one. It's almost all other items um, that you can use. And I teach that in classes in the Cultural Arts Center. Another kind of way that I have so much fun with is it's almost a Jackson Pollock type of a thing where once you've used your either your heat gun or your blowtorch to get your nice smooth background like this, then you can pour molten wax on top and then get a very 3D tactile addition to it. So it's really fun, some of the different things that you can do. And the wax, when it's molten, is about 210 degrees. Uh, and then it cools off in about 30 seconds to get into this um, cooled off state that it's, it, you can add another coat to it right away. And being an oil painter, that really appealed to me a lot because you can already be thinking about your next layer as you're laying your first one down. Uh, this has paper as well as the wax that's been um, poured onto it and it has a metallic sheen to it because it's had some pan pastel added to it afterwards, or maybe it was a watercolor. The, um, there are metallic watercolors too that can be added to it. This, this piece has quite a few different techniques to it, but um, here, let me step back a second. But getting up close to it, you can see there's some shellac burn, there's some uh, poured on wax, there's some laid on wax. There's quite a few different things involved with this. I think there's India ink also rubbed on parts of it. So um, you can get very abstract and uh, just really, really have fun with something like that. You can incorporate papers into a piece as well as um, this one has copper leaf in it. There's a little bit of a sheen on that. I've got a light on it. But um, you can do any shape and size with your work. And this has the shellac burn on it too. Um, that's where those these shapes are from here. These little amber shapes. And then this is something I've just started with. And I'm going to get up close. Um, there is cracked plaster that I've added. And there's a whole... <laughs> several step process to this, but once the, the uh, cracked plaster is put down, then you can do some watercolor on it and then add different transparent colored um, waxes. And then I've laid in a stenciled bit of wax. And on top of that, there's a certain kind of a paint that I've discovered from a workshop down, out in Santa Fe that allows me to paint on top of it with a wax-based paint. And it's not oils, it's water-based. So you can almost use it like a watercolor and then hit it gently with heat and it melds into the wax. So, so many cool things. Um, and last but not least, let me turn the, um, here are some paper items that have, have added a lot of texture and, um, it's very 3D, but I did a series of these. And um, my inspiration was a trip to Nova Scotia and we saw this wall of seaweed and I thought it was so cool. So this was kind of what came from that. But it's paper that has wax and then um, pan, not pan pastel, but uh, oil sticks. And then the, the metallic is from pan pastels that are metallic and then you hit it with the heat gun and it, it goes right into the wax. And here's some very soft pieces. So you can get some bright, shiny things or you can get some very softened things based on what you add to it. I also like to use uh, papers and uh, the, the uh, burgundy section is a, a paper that I got at Blix and the white section is wax. The middle section is a transfer. It's a photo transfer that was actually added and rubbed into the wax and then rubbed off just the ink section on there. So it's a very interesting technique. 
And this one, you can see it's almost like a crackle finish, which I discovered by accident when I kept just applying more and more pan pastel and then hit it with the heat gun and it did that and I started to panic, but then I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. So I just went with it and kept working with it and really liked the results. Um, and then this last piece here has some marbled paper. Suminagashi is what it's called. It's, uh, it's gray and white, but it has these little waves in it. And I added the paper in there and then transparent colors of wax. And then you can see that white was uh, a much thicker layer of opaque wax on top of it to give it almost like a wave effect. Um, the name of it is Wavelength, so you can take what you want from it. And then I've added um, graphite, powdered graphite, to add some depth and some darkness in some sections there. Um, I thought I'd show just real briefly what encaustics are and some materials that are used for it, because some people don't even know what encaustics are. I certainly didn't when I first saw that medium. But basically, it's white beeswax, which you can get in pellet form. But it has to be white. It can't be the yellow, or else you have some very vintage um, kind of oh, an effect that some people like. But it, it just it looks aged. But with the white, it's clear. And then what makes a difference between just um, beeswax and, and caustics is this. It's Damar Crystals, and these are two different brands that have it. And you crush it into little powder form and melt it in with the natural beeswax. And it comes up a, a much more hardened version that you can either purchase in pellet form, or I make my own. I melt these two things together, and it's a long process. And it, it, there's, there's a lot of fumes involved, so I always have to do this in the garage or somewhere else with a, a, an exhaust fan. But um, anyway, that's what you use, and you can add your own pigments to make colors, or you can buy it in these little squares that they almost look like a bar of soap. But what the Damar Rosin does is it makes it into um, a hard surface that um, it's not like candles, it's not like crayons, it's not soft anymore, it's almost like a tile. And because of that, the, the melting temperature is much higher, which means it's not going to melt on your wall, and it's much more durable and heat resistant than what people think. And I add my own pigments and make my own different colors. So this is my bag of blue. Um, so that when I make larger pieces, I'm not worried about running out. Um, it's very easy to <laughs> panic a little bit if you don't think you have enough of a certain color and you're in the middle of working on a piece. The tools that you actually do and how you start with it uh, would be a pancake griddle, or you can purchase, this is the one that r and uh, sells. It doesn't have a lip around it which the griddle does so that if you have some melted wax that's come off, it has a place to catch. Whereas this, it would just melt right off and then it's all over your counter. So I have a little fan, my heat gun, um, pans to put the pellets into and then melt the wax. Um, you can get little pans, all different sizes, as long as it, it, uh, it retains heat. Aluminum is not that great just because it doesn't keep heat very long. But um, this is another really important thing, and it's a stovetop um, heat element so that you know that you've got the right temperature. And then uh, a hockey brush, which is a very soft bristled brush that you would dip into the melted wax once it's at 200 degrees. And then you take the melted, I usually pull it over as close to my piece as possible. You uh, take the melted wax and you brush it onto a hard surface, whether it's masonite or um, you can get the cradled boards at Flick or lots of other places, um, Jerry's Artorama, Utrecht. Um, usually they have a side to them 
like this. This is the kind of thing I like to work on. But you tape the edges so that you have a nice finish when it's done. I usually paint the edges when done. Um, but anyway, once you've painted it on there, then you, you hit it with a heat gun. And this is the super duper heat gun that's about $80 that has lots of different options on it. The ones that I use in classes are more for embossing and they're not quite as powerful and hot so that uh, my students don't get burned. <laughs> um, but they're, they're part of the class that I teach at the Cultural Arts Center so that they don't have to run out and buy something like that. Um, but anyway, once it's brushed on, you hit it with a heat gun so that it attaches to the surface. And then you can do all sorts of things after that. You can add papers. You can um, see, I, I added some little papers on here. Um, I added colored wax here. Um, sometimes you can add watercolor paper to the board and then do watercolor um, uh, to tint the paper and then put clear wax on top of it to get this surface, this color in the back that's very subtle. Um, so what I'll do next with this piece is use um, probably oil sticks in this textured section so that it gives you a nice text, you know, you can see the texture a little bit more in there. And then um, I would add pan pastels. And when I say pan pastels, it's not regular pastels. They are, um, let's see if I can find my drawer, them here. Here they are. this out sorry there they look like pancake makeup so anyway you do use makeup applicators you rub out um, here and then you rub on your piece with the pastel and it gives you depth it you can rub it off if you don't like it but then you hit it with the heat gun and it blends right into the wax and you don't it never rubs off from there so um, there are lots of different ways to finish off pieces. And last but not least, um, you can see the little, little lines. There's something called a stylus, and then you can get some real detail work with something like that too. So all these things um, I've experimented with over the last four or five years when I switched over from oil painting, and I have just had a blast with this medium. And hopefully you'll, you'll learn a little bit more about this uh, medium. And hopefully you might want to try it out at the Cultural Arts Center. Thanks so much. So this is the barn that I have my regular larger studio in. And I'm going to show you in just a second. But I want to walk you up to it because it's so cool that I get to my entrance to my studio is in this silo right here. And we'll get up to it in just a second. You go through this door and... So here we go up into the silo. Let me turn the light on here. Oh, looks like the lights are on already. Up the stairs, which are so cool. This is my little entry area and we'll go into the studio but it's a very rustic it's over a hundred years old in here and it is so cool welcome to my studio space and I don't have it super decorated in here um, we had a lot of storage things we just moved this summer into our new place I hardly have anything hung on the walls um, you can see I've got some stuff in the, in the works to hang, some other works that I've done. Um, but what I wanted to show most of all was the nice space that I've got and some uh, substrates that I've had to make because I didn't make 
four foot by four foot ones and I have a project um, that I'm working on now that uh, I had to make four foot by four foot uh, pieces for and I'm very excited about but boy it's <laughs> a lot of work to um, put those together and I've got them taped already and I should be able to start those pretty soon um, but anyway I'll be pulling these two tables together to lay the boards on and start applying wax and then I'll be doing some shellac burns outside with them and then adding more wax and then carving so it's gonna be a long process but um, anyway, I've got my fan. There's some windows here that I can prop open a little bit when it gets a little bit warmer. And um, I also will do the uh, burns, like I said, outside because it makes a little bit of a bonfire. And uh, anyway, just thought I'd show the really cool surroundings that I've got. And um, it's unfortunate that uh, I started renting here right during COVID, and so I haven't really been able to utilize this as much as I'd like to um, because we also moved during that time period and we use this almost as a storage space. The other reason that I've been sticking with this, uh, this barn rental is that there's this big perk. And guess what? It's a, my own private gallery or space to, to show my work. And um, like I said, I haven't been able to utilize it because of COVID, but um, my gosh, look, I have an entire room to be able to show my encaustics and oil paintings and some of my other work too. And uh, I'm so excited that <laughs> vaccines are coming out and I might actually be able to, um, to have some open houses here and show other work and, um, let others see what a really interesting spot this is. Here, I'll give an overview again. <clears throat> but the the uh, owner here has their own brewery. So I believe it's um, bourbon or let's see, Kentucky bourbon, no. So they might probably will have some kind of a Kentucky Derby party. But anyway, here are some of my other things. Um, photograph on canvas, oil paintings, oil paintings, oils, hand enhanced photos on canvas, another hand enhanced photo, and photo on canvas. But uh, anyway, like I said, I've been um, staying with this particular rental because this is the other huge perk and I can't wait to be able to, um, like I said, either have events or um, classes or um, different ways to use this space too. So take care.